Hello and welcome to KJ's Kitchen. I am KJ. I'm 14 years a master fitness trainer, a fitness nutrition specialist, and most important to me, I'm a happy mom serving up healthy meals from my kitchen to yours every Wednesday here on Facebook on the Get KJ Fit fan page. Now, you can also check me out on Instagram. I post my recipes and your access to them on my IG handle at Get KJ Fit. So, Today is part three of a four part series that I've been doing every Wednesday of November where I'm taking traditional Thanksgiving side dishes uh, and giving them a KJ facelift. And we started off, um, what did, oh my goodness, we did a, a revamp of sweet potatoes so that they're not sugary sweet. And we gave that great option of a sweet and a savory to really tend to the masses. And then last week I did a grain-free, more glycemic friendly, lower carbohydrate version of your pumpkin pie. And then today we are going to be talking about the mashed potatoes because everyone loves mashed potatoes except my daughter. Um, and it's just a ton of starch. It's just a big old bowl of starch. So we're going to be giving that little face, uh, little facelift to it. And I just want to Shout out to my girl, Nikki Dinky of Nikki Dinky Cooking. She's also the author of Meat on the Side. This is an amazing book, guys. If you don't have this in your library, your kitchen library, make sure you get this. You can catch it on anywhere books are sold. Uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, where, where are books sold? Everywhere. <laughs> Look online for Meat on the Side by Nikki Dinky. And if you're browsing through here, Let's see what page, page 91. And how, how beautiful. Um, not only is Nikki giving me a little shout out um, when she says she recently lost her friend Kelly Jo to the warmer weather in the countryside when I left for Asheville. Um, but Nikki and I are still so close, love that girl. And it was actually on that page, um, the highlight of today's dish is cauliflower. Now if you've tried cauliflower mash in the past, I've done it various ways and it's always a pain in the butt but because of Nikki and that recipe is not in here I'm just gonna put that out there it is on her blog I'm gonna post that link so you can get access to that recipe today I'm doing a slight variation to Nikki's recipe I mean it's ever so slight like next to almost the same thing um, definitely the same way because mostly when you're dealing with cauliflower if you're gonna make a cauliflower pizza crust or a cauliflower mash Whatever you're doing, you usually need to like wring the cauliflower out because it's so watery. And I was like, oh, so much work. No one's going to want to do that. You want to boil potatoes and smash them. So that is the beauty of this recipe. If you've subscribed to KJ's Kitchen, you know it's easy peasy all the way. So today we are not squeezing cauliflower through a kitchen towel or cheesecloth. I got you. We are going to be doing such an easy dish. So before you arrived, because I didn't want you hanging out while I watched this water boil, I chopped up uh, into little pieces, bite-sized pieces, florets, um, a medium-sized head of cauliflower. Now that's kind of odd <laughs> to say medium size because it's not a head like ours. So what's medium to you might not be medium to me. I went ahead and like put them into cups because I don't have a kitchen scale. Checklist, uh, KJ Kitchen wish list for Christmas, I'm going to need a kitchen scale because I could have just weighed the cauliflower head and that would have been easier. Um, I think it's around two pounds, but I went ahead and put them in cups. It's around five and a half cups. If you don't mound them a little, it might even be closer to six cups. But what I did was used a two quart saucepan and boop, that's eight cups, guys. So math-wise, I just filled that up uh, about, what would the math be? <laughs> that? Three quarters full. I filled it without water, three quarters full of the cauliflower and three cloves of garlic. I smash it to release the awesome nutrients and then just coarsely chop it, throw it in there. It has already been simmering for a few minutes. You're gonna want it to be 10 minutes. Alexa's gonna tell us when that's done. But in the meantime, you get to prep the rest of it. So a 10 minute wait, and we're gonna have this mashed potato to you in your face in about, you know, probably 10 minutes total because this is almost done. While that's simmering, I'm gonna knock that 
heat down just a little, it's boiling. Um, I'm gonna prep. What I'm prepping is my butter. Two tablespoons of butter. This one is not in Nikki's original recipe. I'm just gonna nuke it in the microwave, make sure it's melted. Um, I added that because in my mashed potatoes, traditional mashed potatoes, I'm always throwing, putting a pat of butter in there. Two tablespoons, I'm getting that melted. I have three ounces of cream cheese. This is the magic. This is why it can thicken up even when you're not straining the cauliflower. Genius, thank you, Nikki. Um, three ounces, I know her recipe called for two. I'm calling this cheesy cauliflower mash for a reason. A little extra cheesiness going on. So butter and cream cheese, yep, that's nice and melted. And the next level of cheesiness is coming from Parmesan. Now guys, I just do the regular Parmesan. This is part of that prep here. Good old chunk running low. Discard my Tupperware here. And we're gonna shred this. This might be about two ounces. We are gonna measure it. It's a half cup. Again, slight variation, Nikki's was a third. I'm going for a half, because I do like the cheesy element. So we're just boosting it just a little, couple pinches, couple tablespoons, right? Um, here we go. I'm shredding this puppy up. Now I do recommend you shred your own cheese. Number one, it's more economical. Number two, it's cleaner. If you look on any shredded cheese package, whether that be Parmesan, cheddar, or any of the variables, Italian blend, what do you say, like Jack and Kobe, <laughs> yeah, any of them, they're gonna say something like modified food starch or something that's actually a non-clumping agent. So literally, that's just extra preservatives and crap in our body. So number one, see, buying in blocks of cheese saves you money, you get more, and you are, Boop, boop, not putting crap in your body. Don't do it. Alexa, please stop. Okay, that means our cauliflower is done. I don't have a sink here. So I just brought a bowl nearby <laughs> so that I can um, show you just my quick, my cauliflower is done. This pot I'm using actually comes with a steamer bottom. So I'm just gonna use it like it were a colander and cut off the heat. Cauliflower. I'm just draining it and straining it really. If this were a sink, it would be much better. Just getting that drained. That is it, guys. I'm just gonna, for a second, leave it here on top of the pan again. Dismiss my giant water bowl. Letting that sit for a second while I finish this prep because it's just gonna continue draining the water in that colander. And I'm using a food processor. Let's just check that two ounces of, of Parmesan. What did that look like? Bam! Man, I'm so good. That was a half cup of shredded Parmesan. There we go. There might be a little bit extra. I would say maybe a teaspoon, but can't go wrong with cheese, especially an amazing cheese like Parmesan. I really root for Parmesan. You could use a white extra sharp cheddar if you are like super anti-parm, but the Parmesan um, is more mindful when it comes to your waistline because it's packing in the flavor with not as much fat as um, cheddar and many of the others. So if you're up for Parmesan, that's what you're doing. Guys, it's ready to rock. Ready? We've got, got a little extra water in there. Drain it out. Boop, 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 boop. Shake, shake, shake what your mama gave ya. Shake what your mama gave ya. And if your mama didn't give it to you, you better work it and you can get one too. All right, here we go. Do, do, do. That's the personal trainer in me talking. <laughs> you can build a booty, I promise. Uh, okay, we've got this cauliflower in here hot. If you have a food processor, cool, put it in hot, it's all good. We're gonna do our half cup of Parmesan with a little extra teaspoon there, cause we don't mind. We've got our three ounces of cream cheese. Boo -doo -boo. Getting her in there, bam. All right, lovely. And we've got our two tablespoons of melted butter. The reason I melted it uh, was to keep the heat. You don't want these mashed cauliflower.
flour to get too cold. So don't use cold butter and cold cream cheese. You want room temp cream cheese. I mean, you could even melt it if you needed it, but room temp cream cheese will bring the temperature down just a little, but I melted that butter to keep it hot in there. One teaspoon of salt. Again, it's just another slight variable of Nikki Dinky's original recipe. She had one and a half teaspoons because she wasn't in, adding in salted butter like I did. She didn't have as much cream cheese, and I find that to be salty, and not as much cheese, which is, again, Parmesan salty. So I just cut salt just a little. I'm going to go a quarter, quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I had my black pepper out. It's hiding. Here we go, and that's it. Well, not completely it, but that's it before we're gonna hit blend. I'm gonna show you what we do before serving. Was that easy? Easy peasy? Lemon squeezy. I think that was just shy a quarter, so I'm just gonna do a tiny little flip to make it a perfect quarter. You get this guy on, you got a rocking and rolling. While he's doing that blending, I'm just gonna sit here and hang out with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, here's an option for you. You can keep on, you see that little puppy's working back there. You can keep letting it blend up until it's like super smooth, or you can leave it slightly clumpy. If you and your family like slightly lumpy mashed potatoes, you might want slightly lumpy cauliflower mash. Here we go. I'm just gonna stop it for a second, just to make sure I take my spatula and scoop down all that Parmesan that's hanging out at the top. Uh, that splattered to the sides. I want that Parmesan and all the cauliflower in there. To me, it's a little too lumpy still. So I'm just gonna give her one more whip. This might serve around four people. If you have a bigger family, you might have to rock it out twice, but you could keep this hot in like a Pyrex in the oven, just keeping it warm until it's time for dinner. And you could even add the second round in. You see how easy it is. Like very quick. You don't have to like hand mash like you do your potatoes. Off. Oh, it's beautiful. Last but not least, I have chives. If you're not a fan of chives, don't do this part. You might even think to do spring on, uh, green onion, uh, blah, 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 blah. scallion. Scallion. Yes. Scallion. <laughs> That's the word. I always call them green onions. Um, but chives, Mmm, they're milder than the green onion. Uh, I did one tablespoon, finely chopped. I just used my scissors. Got my dandy little kitchen scissors. You're popping that in there. One tablespoon. And giving it one last quick whip. Just to mix, that's it. You just want them mixed around. And you have yourself a beautiful, mm, smells good too. Beautiful, it's hot and steamy still. I don't know if you can see the steam. I can see the steam blowing it at you. Um, gorgeous, you see how much that makes? I think it's around four servings, depending on your Thanksgiving table or dinner, how many people are coming to you. Optionally, once you dish this, you could top it with more chives just to be all pretty or even leave a small ramekin dish like the one I just poured it, it out of um, on the side for people once they scoop it onto the plate can sprinkle it with the mash. Let's give this puppy a little taste. I'm so excited. I know what I'm eating for lunch today. Uh, it's so smooth. Mm. And it's not... It is not super cauliflowery. Oh my goodness, it's good. Mm. So, when I was trying this recipe out and trying it in a little bit of variable ways, once I added too much cream cheese, it got too tangy. I find the hot spot is that three ounces of cream cheese because you don't get the tanginess of the cream cheese and the Parmesan is sharp enough it doesn't taste like you're eating cheesy mac, cheesy mac or cheesy potato, um, but the cheesy element brings in the creamy factor that you don't get out of a cauliflower like you would a potato. So even though I'm calling this cheesy cauliflower mash, um, and I think Nikki calls it garlic parmesan cauliflower mash, 
which we have both in there. Uh, it's, it's not a highly cheesy flavor. So I just want to put that out there. What it does is it helps mimic the flavor of mashed potatoes. I've done this last year when I was cooking my own Thanksgiving meal or Christmas meal or both. I actually did half cauliflower with half potato organic across the board and made a blend of cauliflower potato mash. So we really had potato in it still, but I cut the carb in half, threw in the cauliflower, which is a super food. Guys, it's more of a super food than kale. Got it? So that's an option too for you. If you if you really have picky people at your dinner table and they're not gonna be impressed with your cauliflower mash, I know this is going on my mom's Thanksgiving table, I will bring it, um, but you could do a half and half so that people wouldn't even know there's cauliflower in it, huh? So check out Nikki Dinky. She's one of my very best friends. Meat on the Side is her amazing cookbook. I mean, this is, so the elements of this, it's all about making, um, making vegetables the highlight of the dish, but she doesn't eliminate the meat. So it's not a vegetarian book. It's meat on the side, highlighting vegetables, still bringing in the meat and giving you some delicious, delicious, amazing meals, desserts, sides, everything. Check her out, grab this anywhere um, that books are sold. And page 91, when she shouts out to KJ, that's fun for me. Thank you, Nikki, for um, being the skeleton of this awesome recipe today. Just want to shout out to my girl. And if anyone wants this recipe, all of the Thanksgiving side dish recipes and ongoing a weekly recipe from KJ's Kitchen, you're going to sign up to the link I'm going to post below. I'll also post Nikki's blog page because she's got a lot of amazing recipes on her blog that are not in the book, like today's recipe. Um, thank you so much if this recipe served you or you know someone it would serve. Show your love. I like hearts. Hearts, share it to your wall. Let people know that KJ Kitchen is here, <laughs> here to serve every Wednesday from my kitchen to yours. And I really thank you for tuning in. You have a blessed Wellness Wednesday and you take care of yourself.